Thanks for tuning into this week's Stacker Chat, your weekly update on all things Stacks. Stacks is smart contracts for Bitcoin. My name is Gina Abrams, and I'm joined by Muneeb Bali, Stacks founder, for your weekly updates. Now, Muneeb, you recently announced the new entity Trust Machines, which has raised $150 million to build the largest ecosystem of Bitcoin applications. So how is this new entity, Trust Machines, really doubling down on, on your previous work on Stacks and Bitcoin? Yes, absolutely. I think those, those very exciting news, uh, uh, the amount of support uh, and messages that I received from the community were completely overwhelming. So very, very grateful for that. I think the way to think about this is that just like uh, Bitcoin is open source decentralized technology, uh, Stacks is open source decentralized technology. In, in fact, like we have actually been very um, diligent about how decentralized the Stacks ecosystem is, because you, you, if you look at a lot of other crypto projects, uh, they end up in a situation where there is the protocol and then there is a large company behind it, right? And, and we, we absolutely wanted to avoid that situation. And the project pretty organically decentralized leading up to the launch of the, the Stacks mainnet last year. And there are several independent entities which are actually truly independent, right? Like they don't share any directors or officers and they completely act as independent players. And, and, and I think that, that is what led to the idea of trust machines as well. If you look at um, Hero Systems now, Hero's actually found a very narrow focus uh, area of building developer tools. And Hero's really, really good at it and, and, and is getting kind of like a ton of traction on those uh, developer tools. For example, I think just the API that Hero runs is started getting something like 400 million requests uh, monthly now. And it, it, the number is up from like 50 million just, just like some months ago. And for trust machines, what, uh, what we have felt is that there is such a large opportunity uh, right now of building new types of applications on Bitcoin, right? So Stacks is a programming layer, right? And it, it basically enables fully expressive smart contracts and the type of stuff you can build on Ethereum or Solana or some other blockchain now can be built on Bitcoin through, through Stacks. And I think this is, this is like such a large opportunity uh, for example, if you if you look at Ethereum, Ethereum has something like five hundred billion dollars of network value, and then five hundred billion dollars of applications built on top. If you look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin is like almost like a trillion dollars in network value, and almost kind of like you know no applications built on top. So Trust Machine is trying to go after that opportunity. So it's a new entity uh, that is focused on building the largest ecosystem of, of, of Bitcoin applications. Realistically, I think uh, uh, Trust Machine would end up building, I would say maybe four or five uh, applications in the in the coming years, right? So that's that's the simplest way to think about Trust Machines. But then obviously, if there is work required on the underlying technology, let, let's uh, let's uh, say that you know the Stacks open source uh, project needs needs uh, contributions or you know. Um, the work on uh, hyperchains uh, because faster speeds are so important. Trust machines can obviously contribute uh, to those uh, platform projects as well. And how are your core areas of focus shifting with this announcement? Um, can you speak to if it might impact things like hyperchains or any scalability work ahead? Yeah, I think I think in general, I would say uh, there is some shift, but there is definitely not a drastic shift because. Um, I've been I've been kind of like you know thinking about this and planning this over over the last two quarters or something, and at Hero uh, we've been I'm very grateful that we've been able to actually hire a very strong leadership team. Um, Alex, who was the chief operating officer and now the new CEO, uh, um, joined us from Stack Overflow where they recently had a 1.8 billion dollar exit, and similarly the Walker has been responsible for kind of like the launch of the Stacks mainnet. Joined us from Dropbox, who's the new CTO at at Hero, and over the last two quarters or so, um, like the day-to-day -day operations of Hero were already run by Alex, right? And I was spending, and I, I was able to free up my time to spend on uh, things that I want to uh, focus on, like R and D work, or spending more time with developers who are, who are building on top, or looking at you know new types of things that <clears throat> maybe I want to build, right? So interestingly, uh, when when I was doing these things at Hero. Sometimes there would be a tension between 
uh, you know, focusing on the developer tooling aspect or launching some new application. Uh, if you if you remember the launch of the dot BTC app, right? Like that actually came came from Hero, and internally, like you know, it it it's actually not as clean of a separation because dot BTC is a user facing type of an application. It's not a it's not a, it's not a, a dev tooling product. So instead of me like trying to like launch more applications from Hero, it actually makes a ton of more sense to have a separate entity. Uh, it's good for decentralization. Uh, it's good for focus because Hero is a dev tooling company and the DNA of an app building company is actually very different. The culture of an app building company is very different. And in many ways, like I'm very excited about, I have a bunch of ideas about the kind of applications I would love to see built on top of Bitcoin through Stacks. And this gives me the opportunity to really kind of like work with, with those team members directly and try to, uh, try, try to launch those things. Obviously, I think I'm... Uh, I'm a computer scientist by training and I, uh, I get attracted to deep kind of like technical challenges. So any work on hyperchains, any work on any uh, underlying platform technologies, I would say that's like more bread and butter for me, right? But I am, uh, I get very excited about the, uh, the possibilities of new applications. So the way Trust Machine is structured is that we have uh, general managers, the, these GMs, uh, people can think of them as like almost like you know CEOs of their own um, application, right? And they will have their own team of like four or five people working on an application. So in that way, like that's my relationship there. That I'll work very closely with the GMs for these apps. Uh, I'm mostly giving kind of like the high level direction or hey, what I'm excited about. But it's really the the GM of the app that's actually running the application and, and making sure it gets built. It's, it, it 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 does what it's supposed to do, and they they can move very fast on that. So I, I really love the new structure. It's a little bit like um, we had the flexibility of designing the structure how we wanted it to be, and we are very grateful for the investors that uh, they're completely fine with. Uh, uh, they, they're thrilled by the idea of like we want to do this on top of Bitcoin, and I think the the real bet that they are making is that uh, Web3 on Bitcoin right now is a very contrarian thing, right? And I think uh, there are people who understand that this is almost like, this is one of those things that would be obvious in hindsight, right? And, and, and they are super excited about coming in and being the early backers uh, of a company that is gonna basically help make, uh, make that happen. Great, thank you. And can you um, speak about some of the applications that you're excited about and going to be focusing on? Yes, yeah, so I think some, some of the details are going to uh, come out very quickly, like in the coming weeks. So I, I don't want to kind of like uh, ruin the surprise or the announcement that's going to come out from Trust Machines. But I think in general, these are the type of things that I've been talking about publicly. Like, for example, I'm very interested in uh, Bitcoin lending uh, as, as an example. I think there is a potentially a huge market of working on a Bitcoin lending application that is completely trustless and, and, and so on. So I would say uh, the short answer is stay tuned. Like, you know, uh, we are we're going to uh, release more details very, very soon from, from Trust Machine side. Great, great. And then will Trust Machines be operating primarily as an active builder or maybe as an investment fund or both? Can you elaborate there? I think the main kind of like focus of Trust Machine is to be a builder, right? Like we want to hire a lot of engineers, product people, designers, and really build things uh, in, in the ecosystem. So that's like the primary focus. Uh, at the same time, we realize that, you know, sometimes we might, uh, like we want to be very collaborative with the rest of the ecosystem. We want to contribute to open source projects. We want to even hire Bitcoin core developers or uh, Lightning developers or other open source technologies. Like I think we're also taking a very broad view of this as well, that any technologies that help make Bitcoin applications a reality, we're willing to contribute to that. So Bitcoin is one layer, Stacks is another layer on top. And then there, if there's any open source project that kind of like helps this, uh, we are we're kind of like willing to contribute there. Basically, do whatever it takes to make Web3 on Bitcoin a reality, right? I think Stacks has already done amazing work there, uh, but we are we are here to help and, and and contribute. So in terms of like you know how people should think about Trust Machine, they should really think of that as we are we are building we are builders we are building applications, and we might you know end up 
discovering some teams that are at very early stages. Uh, maybe maybe we we end up kind of like bringing them in house or something like that, or uh, write small checks into some uh, startups that are uh, that we think are doing interesting things, and we want to kind of like collaborate more with them. So in some ways, you might see some uh, type of uh, you know investing activity coming out, but that's really not the focus of what what Trust Machines is. I think Trust Trust Machine is by far in the business of kind of like being a builder uh, in in the ecosystem. Thank you. And you touched on this, but will Trust Machines innovations be primarily open source? I think like we are extremely uh, like kind of like open source friendly. So a ton of the work, like especially, you know, any work that is going into uh, the underlying platforms that almost like by definition needs to be open source. Same with the applications, because these applications are decentralized and trustless. Like I think we'll see like a bunch of work, just, just open source available for anyone to use. I think with that said, at the end of the day, it is a, a company and you know the company is going to have some sort of business models where the company can make money down in the future. So if there is some, some sort of software uh, that is the, the company property and we're gonna make money off, off of that down the road, like you can expect not, that to be not open source. But in general, like given like who the people are and how committed we are to uh, just like enhancing open source software, I would say uh, that, that a large majority of the work would likely end up being, uh, being in the open. Great, thank you. And so one final question is just, you know, Trust Machines is entering a, a pretty quickly growing ecosystem of application builders. And so how should folks that are building really think about Trust Machines and potentially collaborate? Yes, I think the, uh, I would say that right now, the total economy uh, of Bitcoin applications is actually very small. And I think the opportunity size of what this could be is very, very large. So in, in this uh, kind of like situation, I think people should definitely have like, you know, not a zero sum type of a mindset. Uh, I don't. I don't think like uh, right now there is going to be a lot of competition internally in the Bitcoin app economy, just because like you know how how relatively small it is and how much it could potentially grow to. And I, I do think that right now it makes a ton of sense for anyone who's working in the Stacks ecosystem to be collaborating with each other. And we are already seeing that. I'm, this is something I'm very um, I'm very proud of that the kind of community that. Uh, got attracted to this project. Like they're very collaborative. They they help each other out, even even when you know they could potentially be competing. Like you know, even even uh, let's say NFT marketplaces are helping each other out, and they're clearly kind of like in many ways uh, competing with each other and so on. But I think that's a very good um, good direction that our community is very organically going in, and I expect that to continue. Right. So obviously. Um, we realize that there's a Stacks Accelerator, there are people who are doing kind of like startups in, in the ecosystem as well, and Trust Machine is going to build some applications, but it's not like Trust Machine can build all the app possible applications that are out there, right? Like we're obviously going to pick our focus areas. Uh, initially, there will be two, three applications we're focusing on, maybe down in the years, the number would go to four or five or something like that. But given, given how large the opportunity space is for Bitcoin applications, like there could be like hundreds or thousands of other other startups and people people doing these things, right? So we would love to collaborate from our side. We would love to contribute uh, to the community as much as we can. And I think uh, I'm I'm personally kind of like not worried about that there will be kind of like competition between what Trust Machine is doing or what what some other startup in the ecosystem might be doing. Definitely, thank you. And 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 one last one last comment that even if there ends up being competition from a decentralization perspective, that's a good thing, right? Same, same with Hero, right? Like Hero runs dev tooling or APIs. There might be other companies that come in and be like, hey, look, this is a expanding economy. We want to offer dev tooling and APIs here. And if Hero gets more competition from a decentralization perspective, I think that's a great thing. That's a great outcome because in the end, the users win because they have more choices and that actually helps everyone to produce better products because they have to win by offering better products in the market. Excellent, thank you. 
Well, also wanted to mention that um, since our last recording, we saw Satoshables, a project that has seen a lot of traction originally in the Ethereum ecosystem, um, coming back to Bitcoin with the first Ethereum to Stacks bridge. Um, so just wanted to sort of get, get your reaction on that news as well. Yeah, that was that was very exciting to see. Um, I, I still need to uh, kind of like, you know, double click on how the bridge is implemented and learn learn more about that as well. But I think in general, uh, it's it's amazing to see that that uh, people are doing that. They realize the value of kind of like Bitcoin NFTs through Stacks, and especially something that uh, is very close to Bitcoin culture. It makes like a lot of, it, it just makes a lot of sense for that NFT project to be on Bitcoin. But the, but the fact that they went ahead and actually implemented a bridge that other people can use as well is, is super interesting. And I do think like this might be uh, something we see more later this year and next year, uh, especially with other types of bridges going online or potentially uh, some work around making it easier for people to migrate their assets from Ethereum to the Bitcoin world. Uh, I do think a lot of Bitcoiners would be very happy to see kind of like, you know, uh, some sort of NFTs or other types of digital assets that are migrating over from Ethereum uh, to Bitcoin and, and kind of like, you know, uh, it, it, they, 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 we can make like Bitcoin more competitive uh, on, on the application side as well. And getting giving Ethereum some real competition there would be something that I think in the Bitcoin community, a lot of people would be like, yes, obviously, you know, Bitcoin can do this. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mooney, for being here. And thanks to everyone for tuning in. That's a wrap for today's Stacker Chat. Definitely make sure that you are subscribed um, and that you are following along for updates on Stacker Chats. Um, I also wanted to give a shout out to Bowtie Muneev and all the community members who asked questions. And um, yeah, we would love to continue to answer your questions. So definitely let us know on Twitter. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.